Hello everyone. In this session, we are going to discuss about types of asexual reproduction. You remember asexual reproduction we studied in the last section? It is when one single organism gives rise to two new individuals, right? How this process exactly takes place is what we are going to discuss in detail. There are different types of asexual reproduction like phagin, vegetative propagation, regeneration, fragmentation, spore formation and budding. We are going to discuss about each and every type in detail. Let's start with the first type that is phagin. The word phagin means division. Binary phagin is the first uh, type of asexual reproduction. Bi means two and phagin means division. It mostly takes place in unicellular organisms. Unicellular organisms, basically the organisms which has only one cell. Okay, they are made up of only one cell. Such organism reproduces by this method that is binary phagin. The next question comes here is, when will the organism reproduce? Every now and then? No, it does not reproduce every now and then. Two conditions are required for them to reproduce. The first condition is maturation. An organism when reaches maturity and when adequate amount of food, temperature, moisture is available, that is, they have favorable conditions, right? If I don't give you food for three to five days, you will not be able to survive. You will not be able to live in this environment. Same way it happens with every organism. So organism when has a favorable condition and when it reaches maturity, we also reproduce when we reach a particular period when we become adult then only we are able to reproduce same way it happens with every organism they are able to undergo fusion or division only when they reach maturity and when they have favorable conditions what happens in this process there are two steps which are there in this process first is karyokinesis and second is cytokinesis karyo means nucleus when the nucleus divides into two it is said to be karyokinesis and then the cytoplasm divides and it is said to be cytokinesis. As you see in the picture, first there is a parent organism. In this, the nucleus will divide first and then the cytoplasm will lead to constriction, a small gap in between and then it will lead to the formation of two new cells, right? It is always, please, please remember in every division, it is always the nucleus will divide first and then the remaining things will divide. Okay. One more important point which you have to consider here. The parent organism does not exist after division. Right. You can relate it to, I give you a pencil and ask you to break that pencil into two. You'll, will you get the original pencil with you after you break it into two? No. Same way it happens with the organism also. Once a parent organism divides into two new cells, it will not have the parent. The parent will no longer be there. It itself has divided into two new daughter cells. Examples of the organisms undergoing this fusion are amoeba, paramecium, euglena, etc. Okay. So important points you have to remember about binary fission. Bi means two. Fission means division. Takes place in unicellular organisms like amoeba, paramecium. Involves two steps. Karyokinesis, cytokinesis. Very important to remember. Karyo means two. Uh, sorry. Karyo means nucleus divides. Cyto means cytoplasm divides. And finally, the organism reaches maturity and it divides into two. Okay, three to three points here are very important. Then we go to the next type of fission that is multiple fission. The word itself tells you what do you mean by multiple, right? Multiple means many organisms are formed at one point. One single organism can give rise to many organisms at a time. But the difference, in addition to this difference, there is one more difference. That this fission takes place when an organism is under unfavorable condition. Right? Unfavorable condition means what? It does not have food, 
it does not have water it does not have proper temperature and so on when all this are not available then the organism has to do something to survive in the unfavorable condition right if i don't give you food you will go outside and eat pizza you will do something to survive right in the same way the organism ha also has to do something to survive and that something when an organism does to survive in unfavorable condition give rise to n number of organisms by a process that is multiple fission now let's see what an organism is doing like sometimes uh, it is very cold outside and we wear jackets to protect ourselves from the extreme cold conditions right in the same way whenever there is unfavorable condition the organism will first form a thick coating around itself this organism is forming a thick coating sorry is forming a thick coating around itself and this coating the organism when it forms a coating it is said to be cyst once this cyst is formed now the organism is safe from the external environment now what it does the second step it does in this unfavorable condition is it keeps its nucleus dividing it keeps on dividing its nucleus and it divides into several nuclei and each nuclei is also surrounded by a membrane it's sitting inside it does not have any work to do so what it is doing dividing its nucleus keeping on dividing till the space is full and preserving that nucleus also with a membrane right so what is the first step the first step occurs in unfavorable condition is formation of cyst what is cyst it is a thick coating around and second is the nucleus divides into several nuclei and each nucleus is surrounded by membrane will the organism be as it is no because in this way it has not given rise to new organisms it has to give rise to new organisms so when the favorable conditions come back as summer comes we throw our jackets right in the same way when the cyst uh, favorable conditions come back the cyst will dissolve or break open burst open whatever you consider and the daughter nuclei will come out along with some cytoplasm and give rise to new individuals okay so when favorable conditions arise the cyst will burst open and it will lead to formation of n number of daughter cells again the parent will not be available after this generation example is plasmodium which is a malarial parasite you also have uh, ant amoeba histolytica which is another important organism which undergoes by multiple fission so here are few points about multiple fission which you have to remember plasmodium leishmania and amoeba histolytica occurs in unfavorable condition develops a cyst which helps in protection nucleus divides several times and surrounded by membrane and favorable conditions arise uh, the cyst dissolves and each nuclei give rise to new individuals okay last thing we study uh, this is all about fission now we go to a very simple method of asexual reproduction which is known as fragmentation so fragmentation is basically fragments means pieces imagine i break myself into three pieces i have a head i have hands and legs separately after you come after uh, say two or three months and see at me my head will be divided into a whole new body my hands will be divided into my whole new ankita again and the legs will be divided into whole new ankita that is three ankitas don't get scared at night okay this is a way unicellular organisms or you can say some simple multicellular organisms reproduce we do not reproduce in this way right what happens in fragmentation as i give gave you an analogy same way the body of the organism divides into n number of pieces and each piece has the capacity to give rise to whole new individual right example is sea anemone flatworms the diagram here will give you more clear explanation or understanding so what is this spirogyra this is a parent organism 
which when reaches maturity again an adult stage divides into fragments and each fragment has the capacity to give rise to two new individuals right this is the first fragment forming new spirogyda this is the second fragment again forming new spirogyda right so this is all about fragmentation very simple process maturity division into n number of pieces and each piece giving rise to new organisms examples are very important diagrams are very important do remember them we'll study about the different uh, types of asexual reproduction in the next session thank you